story time with a moral of the story at the end. Y'all ready? Let's get started. So this week at work, I was triggered like a motherfucker. At the end of this video, I will read you a post on Instagram about how to use mindfulness to cope with being triggered. So I have gone to therapy for a bunch of years now. I have read a bunch of books about self-help, healing, trauma, and I actually have a degree myself in psychology and behavioral science. So let's just say I got a little bit of experience in triggered, right? This week, so I got a new job about four words ago that I really like. I like it so far, okay? It's important that I preface this with certain information. Number one, I am West African, born and raised. Hella proud to, okay? Moved, in, moved to America about 12 years ago, so I'm only 12 American years. I am an African African, not an African American, okay? I understand that to white people there is no difference, <laughs> but to me there is, to the blacks there is, okay? Um, my place of work only this year hired two black employees. Both of these black employees are women, we're both black women. We have about 40 staff on camp, ooh, on campus, now you know I work at school, and two out of us are black, me and another girl, that's it, this story is about telling you basically how this slowly ramped up and got to this point, a few weeks ago, the other lady didn't come to work, they called me, hey, do you know why she isn't at work, I'm like, who, the other lady, Let's call her Stephanie Blackson. Stephanie Blackson. Do you know where Stephanie Blackson is? I'm like, who the fuck is Stephanie Blackson? The other lady. I'm like, who the fuck is the other lady? The lady that you always talk to. I'm like, who the fuck? She look like you. I'm like, bitch, I don't even look like my daddy. Who is it that you talking about? Describe her. She says she's also African American. Number one, I've never spoken to that woman. We don't have beef. I've just noticed that the, the few times that we have crossed paths, when I smile at her, she doesn't smile back. So that's that on that. I don't have beef with her. If you fuck with her, I will beat your ass because black on black on black. But we don't have a relationship, right? So I'm like, I've never spoken to her. What are you talking about? And I am five foot three light skin. She is like six foot one dark skin. We do not look alike. What are you talking about? That is crazy. The fact that you realize that you don't have another way to explain why you are asking me this. So you're going to make up stuff like, you always talk to her. Bitch, where? Bitch, where? You are lying. So I ask her, why would you think that I would know where she is? She said, I don't know, um, because, um, you guys both come from, like, separate agencies. What? You still, you see, it's like me saying one and one, and you say, apples. Bitch, what are you talking about? Right? That was one. I was like, mm, bitch, no, I don't know her like that. And I don't know why she's not at work. And if she didn't come to work, she would call office management. She wouldn't call her co-worker. Even if, even if she was my bestie, she wouldn't call me. She would call management, front office, bosses. Not the co-worker and say, tell them I said I ain't coming. What are you talking about? What? There's a fucking fly around here. Second incident that happened... Um, I went to an office to help a lady. I was sent to the office, basically. Go help this lady out with her kids for the, a couple of hours. I go there. She has a book written by LeBron James. Again. 
Even if you don't watch basketball, have you not heard that name before? Anyways, she grabs the book and she says, I'm going to read this to the kids. And um, I, I got it from the front desk. I thought it was really nice. And since, okay, let's get started. She turns the book in the back and there's a picture of LeBron James and his daughter. And she's like, Mrs. Dell, do you know him? Who? The guy in the picture? She says, yes. No, I don't know him. Oh, okay. But who is he? Bitch, you got the book. I didn't get the book. You got the book. So I don't know. What does it say? She said, written by LeBron James. I'm like, well, that's LeBron James. LeBron James! I'm sorry. Every time I say his name, that comes in my head. I don't know where that gif is from. LeBron James! Anyways, back to the conversation. So, I'm like, I don't know. It's LeBron James. You've never heard of LeBron James? She's like, no. What does he do? He sucks bitches in the face, bitch. What do you want me to tell you? She opens the book and starts to read it. And she says, Oh, no, no, no. He's dream school. Oh, he has a school, Mrs. Dell? So then I'm like, why do you keep asking me? I did not come with the book. You brought the book. That's incident number two. Incident number three. A few Last week, I decided to go to work with a wig on. Why did I want to go to work with a wig on? Because I'm a black woman and I could do what the fuck I want to do. I get to school and immediately, okay, I work with kids. So immediately, oh my God, what's going on? Why is your hair? What happened? Can I touch it? Can I feel it? Can I touch it? Can I feel it? Can I touch it? Can I smell it? Can I sniff it? After about 17 of those, I was like, all right, now I'm over it, bitch. What the fuck? You've never seen a black woman with different black hair? Are you serious? The, let's call her the supervising person in my office. We're walking into the class. It's hard to try to keep this private. We're walking into the classroom, right? And she goes, oh, I want it. Oh, my God. It looks so soft. I want to touch it. And I say, don't touch it. Before I finish saying don't touch it, she goes, oh, my God. It's so soft. So she touched my hair. My wig. From the back. Next day, I'm sitting there at lunch. Same beautiful last week. By the way, the wig was orange. So I look like ice spice. And then it was a munch, okay? Um, she comes over with her phone, stands right in front of my face in posture to take a picture. Er? Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. What are you doing? She said, I'm taking a picture. I said, no, you cannot take a picture of me. You cannot take a picture of me. She says, well, too bad. I got to show my husband because I told my husband about it yesterday and he just can't picture it. I got to show him. Takes a picture, walks away. Bitch. Oh, this is the day I go to jail. This is the day I go to jail. I was immediately triggered. Did not know what the words were, but I knew that, bitch, if I don't get the fuck out of here, I'm going to beat your fucking ass. An hour and a half left of work to finish. Took a few deep breaths. Told myself it is time to dissociate. When you have anxiety and horrible trauma, you learn to dissociate, my nigga. I dissociated for the rest of the day. And when I got home, I processed it. What the fuck just happened? Why would she do that? Who does that? Are you fucking kidding me? I realized that I felt violated. Right? And then I realized, oh my God, black Americans go through this all the fucking time. This is why black Americans say we need diversity. You need to hire more black people. Not because they just want to be in there with you, motherfuckers, in your business. Because you, you are almost over 40 years old and you look that ignorant. That I'm going to touch somebody's hair. I'm going to take a picture with, of them without their permission. Because I have never seen anything like this. Bitch, how is that my problem? That's fucked up. I was triggered. 
get home, took a long, long, warm bath, smoked some good weed, set a good dick appointment, got some good dick, and went to sleep. After two days, I sat her down and had the conversation with her about how inappropriate the behavior was and the fact that I never wanted it to happen again. I also let her know that as a black woman, my hair is going to continue to change from texture and color based on my fucking mood and wish and want. I don't want to have a TED talk about it every single week, though. I also want you to let all the other white people on this campus know that I am not going to be answering these questions every single fucking week. There are documentaries. There are Google answers. There are black people who leave to educate others about black. I don't leave for that. Y'all don't pay me to educate you about black people. So I will not be doing that for free. So, some of you have heard that story. Like, bitch, I've been to that like 155 times. But like I said, this is like my American 12 years. Imagine if I was a 12-year-old child and that just happened to me. That's how I felt. That's how I felt that I said, no, don't take a picture of me and you didn't listen. Because if the roles were reversed, a black woman taking a picture of a white woman without her consent. Oh! Uh? In America? In don't know Trump's America? In McLemore's America? Bitch, please. So, everybody has their way of coping with stress. But how you respond when triggered is very important. Because you might end up being labeled a crazy black person at work. And that's unfair. That we have to worry about not being a crazy ha person at work. We have to um, moderate how we feel, moderate our pain, because people might mislabel us. That's, that's fucked up, right? But if you're triggered, here's a few ways that you can deal with it, right? The following slides pose questions to ask yourself when you are experiencing a trigger. With practice, this can help soothe and center yourself when experiencing a trigger or other intense emotional reactions. Many survivors have also complicated or downright, downright negative reactions to mindfulness, and that is okay. Not all healing and coping skills will resonate with every person. Your healing journey is unique to you. This is from the I Am Empower. I-A-M-E-M-P-W-R. If you want to find it on Instagram, I'll write it in my uh, description. Okay. Right now, I am feeling, okay, when you start to bubble up, because I was like, what am I feeling? Remember I said, I don't even know how I was feeling. Ah, what am I feeling? I don't know what I'm feeling. You have to figure it out first. Figure out what I'm feeling, then I can address it, then I can de-escalate it, then I can make myself feel safe. Right now, I am feeling. Describe your current emotions. Try to be specific. Anger, fear, overwhelm, panic, doubt, insecurity. Name these emotions without judging yourself. Remember that your feelings are valid, and whatever they might be, they are valid, okay? I am feeling dash in my body. Try to name five sensations you feel in your body. That day, I remember feeling completely, going completely cold. Like, my body is just cold. Like, all the blood run out of my body. I felt my fingers tingling. I felt frozen. I felt like I was out of space. And then my, my stomach started to get warm. I started to get shaking. For example, I can feel that my chest is tight. My face is flush. I feel a pit in my stomach. It is normal to feel trauma and emotions in different parts of our bodies. You can feel it in your arm, in your elbows, in your jaw, in your back, anywhere. That is still valid. Next, because I am thinking about dash, 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 dash. So we started with right now i am feeling next was i am feeling dash in my body i am feeling beca this because i am thinking about what triggered this reaction triggers are unique to all of us and anything can trigger us was it a memory was it a feeling was it a flashback any of that can activate a trauma response 
if you can try to be specific with what caused this response sometimes you may not know what caused it and that is also okay me feeling frozen and going cold was me the reaction of feeling powerless i just said no and you crossed my boundary so my immediate reaction was go cold like what flight or fry right i i flew i flighted it i went away but now i know remind yourself that this is a trigger and that you are safe in this moment i told you acknowledge what it is address it right handle it and then go back to feeling safe remind yourself that this is a trigger and that you're safe in this moment center yourself in the current moment by asking yourself questions like what is the date and time where am i right now how do i feel close your eyes am i feeling warm is it feeling cold am i able to breathe through both of my nostrils or one feel stuffy does my skin feel cold? What are five things that you can notice right now? Visually, with your ears, with your smell. I see TV. I see the light. My shirt is blue. The pad is yellow. I have a pen. What can you see? And so I know. So because I'm able to see the reality, I know that right now I am safe. I have the skills to help myself through this moment. Repeat yourself. Repeating and speaking these things out loud can help further ground you. If you're experiencing trauma, triggers are normal. Validate your experience. So tell yourself that you are not defined by your tra tra traumas. You're also not defined by your triggers. I hope that you got something out of this story. And I'm sending you a whole bunch of love. Bye, guys. My phone is about to die. I got to rush. Bye.